You're listening to Reasons to be Cheerful with Ed Miliband and Jeff Lloyd. So to talk about some of the ways in which people are finding to organise workers, I'm delighted to say that we're joined by Alex Marshall, who's chair of the Couriers and Logistics branch of the IWGB, a small union representing precarious workers. Alex, thanks so much for joining us. No problem. It's my pleasure. Let's just start at the sort of beginning. You've worked as a courier for a number of years. Can you tell us about your experiences as a courier and what led you to get involved in the union before we come on to the the particular campaign you're working on? I have been a courier now for eight years. Um, My journey to becoming a courier was that I didn't really like the idea of the kind of traditional nine to five heading to the same office every day. It kind of brought brought me out in a cold sweat. And the idea of, you know, the freedom of being on the road, not having a fixed workplace, you know, supposedly having that flexibility of being a courier kind of drew me to the road, sort of pay, getting paid to exercise and all those kind of things that you, you associate with being a courier. Um, so I started the job and quite quickly realized that, you know, the flexibility was a myth. Um, I was working long hours, hard hours. I think when I started, I was getting about £30 a day. And all this idea of, you know, having flexibility, working when you want. I mean, the courier industry is set up in a way that you're told you're self-employed. But if you try and exercise any flexibility, there's kind of various ways that they sort of dock your wages. You lose your 20% bonus and that they sort of trick you into working full time without holiday pay, without pension, without all these things. So... I quite quickly realised that I had issues with the way the industry was set up and this was my sort of journey to kind of joining a trade union, uh, realising that, you know, me by myself, I wasn't going to be able to fix things. The IWGB Careers branch had, had recently formed. I joined it without that much of a knowledge of trade unions, but I thought, you know, I'm going to support this. Um, so we started unionising at my workplace and we started to win a bunch of things at a company called TDL, which is a big medical company in central London, um, won our worker status. We're getting paid pensions, you know, which is unheard of. We, I was working alongside with guys who've been in the industry 25, 30 years, and they were suddenly getting holiday pay and a pension. Um, so we were starting to change the industry. And from there, we're sort of kicking on with the IWGB career and logistics branch. And you're now helping to coordinate the riders' revolt. Tell us what that is and what you're arguing for. The IWGB career and logistics branch kind of was founded a few years ago and that was early days of these kind of app based kind of courier um yeah courier ways of picking up stuff delivering stuff um but we've seen as i'm sure everyone knows this emergence of like delivery uber you you can hardly leave the house without seeing you know one of your neighbors getting a takeaway or something nowadays so there's been more and more of this app based kind of way of working um and the conditions if we thought they were bad in the courier industry before with these guys it's even worse you know we're seeing wages plummeting we're seeing cities flooded with riders and it's delivery where you're focused yeah so i mean hence riders revolt it is it is based on delivery but we're still organizing with uber eats just the and what are you trying for with delivery what how's it go well how are you going about this campaign so i mean one one of the most tragic things about this is, you know, you think when you were launching a campaign and putting the amount of strength and devotion into these kind of things, you, you're really trying to like topple mountains. But what these guys are actually fighting for are, are the absolute basics. You know, like one of our de- demands of a recent launch at our AGM is for these guys to have a fair process around terminations. That's how desperate the situation is. We've got one guy in Sheffield who's just been accused of not following uh, COVID regulations. You know, this guy's from the BAME community who've been, you know, adversely affected in this pandemic. He's been really scared to work. He's got a young family. He's got three kids. He's managed to get himself out to work. He's been applauded, but he's been terrified throughout. He suddenly got a, an, an email saying, yeah, Khaled, you didn't follow these these guidelines, which he, he swears he has, and you've been terminated. He's thinking, I've worn a mask. I've tried as hard as I can to keep distance from people. And it's, it's Kafkaesque, you know. You're, you're, you're left standing there thinking, 
what have I done wrong? And, and most of the time, these guys just give up. And what we're trying to instill in everyone is that you don't have to give up. Like, we're actually fighting for a fair process, for fair pay, for fair treatment. And, you know, to actually give these guys a voice, to actually say this is completely unfair, especially off the back of the shift they've just put in throughout the pandemic. And just in terms of your riders revolt, what's the what's the main set of demands? The main demands are rights, respect and fair pay. So these guys, they, they want to be able to take a living wage home after they've, you know, subtracted the cost of doing the job. They want to have respect, you know, whether that's from the customers, the re- restaurants or their employers. And they want more rights. You know, these guys should be able to accrue holidays or they should be able to have some sort of pension. You know, they should have better rights than they do because at the moment they've got nothing. So they, they deserve the right to a fair process, whether that's around terminations, whether that's around complaints or anything like that, because at the moment they hardly have a voice unless it's through us. Given, you know, the nature of being a rider, you're, you're a lone ranger, you're out on your own. How easy is it to to organise? It's, it's quite a, an isolated job being a courier in a way. What, what is, you know, what, how have you manage to sort of get these people together and get a set of common goals so i mean yeah I, be, being a courier is one of the draws of it that it is that kind of nomadic existence but it that that's what can make it so hard to organize and that's what makes it so easy for these guys to exploit you know it's a fractured workforce there isn't a set workplace you know it's there's only so much you can say in a brief exchange at a traffic lights and if, if you try and say too much someone thinks you're a weirdo and they sort of cycle off even faster um but yeah i guess i guess whatsapp groups and and stuff like that those have become our workplaces you know towns cities all over the country they all have uh, localized whatsapp groups and if you can get into these whatsapp groups or, or people approach the union and you get added to the whatsapp group you start giving them ideas you start giving them a structure you start organizing and you start you start giving them hope and showing them you know through certain action you can put sustained pressure on companies and and you can start to make wins talk talk to us about some wins so so one of the strategies that we started to roll out is so for these guys because they're such precarious workers the idea of fully going on strike it's not only like really hard to coordinate with thousands of people working in a city it's also um really damaging for them you know some of these guys literally can't afford to down tools for a whole night so one of the strategies we thought of recently is a boycotting strategy so you target one of the main partners of you know delivery or uber eats you know the mcdonald's wagamama's um, pizza express all these kind of places and all these guys have to do is reject for the whole night so they can just reject from a place and just stop picking up and they can completely shut down delivery at these restaurants for a whole evening and you know cost them hundreds of thousands of pounds over the course of however long they want to do these boycotts that's the one of the ways they've actually got away with you know this bogus idea of flexibility and it's actually beating them with their own their own tool that uh, you know they've given them this flexibility so these guys are now able to use that and all of a sudden waiting times you know get better in these places you know the the, the treatment of the 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 couriers gets better in these places you know they're small gains but the the kind of thing that this then instills in the workers means where where do we go to next so we're talking on this episode about the future of trade unions and do you, do you think there are lessons from your campaigns about how to rebuild the the power of workers and and also just sort of workers engaging in in that type of collective action yeah definitely i mean you know we're we're organizing in one of one of the kind of industries that is notoriously hard to kind of organize in and you know a lot of the people we're organizing with is such a kind of eclectic mix in the career industry you know you don't have to speak good english to be a courier so we're seeing people from all over the world but that you know it's a really unified struggle you know a lot of these people they're starting from a place where they've got no trust whatsoever in unions but we're so we're starting from a place that's way behind we're, we're convincing them to join the union and then we're convincing them that the action they're taking is going to win them things so yeah i mean we're making huge progress I'm, I'm incredibly optimistic that we can make huge strides in this industry and you know i look forward to these major boycotts and big strikes if, if they have to happen but i think we're definitely on our way there 
Alex, we have a thing on the podcast called the Jeffocracy, which is the idea that Jeff is a benign ruler where he has sort of ultimate power. And it, some of us see it as a dystopia, but he sees it as a utopia. And let's sort of suspend our disbelief. I think I would have a lot of takeaways delivered, but I would want to know that they were being delivered in a fair, ethical way. Assuming that he made you the sort of secretary of state for the gig economy, let's just say, what would you say to him you wanted to see happen? I think the businesses should be making sure these guys are making at least the living wage after their costs. And that, and that should be the whole time they're logged in. You know, that shouldn't just be when they have a job on them. You know, if you're sat on the side of a street waiting for a job to come, you're, you're at work, you know, you're not at home with your family. So these guys should be getting paid from the second they log in. And it should be at the end of a shift that, you know, once you subtract the costs of doing that job, you should be taking home a living wage. You should be making ends meet. And they should be able to accrue holiday while they're working as well. They should also be able to, you know, at least put away enough money for a pension or even opt into a pension scheme. But yeah, then then on the other hand, it's, you know, restaurants to be treating them better, to be giving them honest waiting times. And then customers to also, you know, respect them, give, give them tips, you know, treat these guys well, because, you know, they have been really risking themselves in recent months. You know, it might... You know, we've been taught to think of these guys as unskilled, but, you know, we couldn't have lasted without couriers over the last sort of six months. You know, these guys have really proved how much they're worth. And, and it's time for the public and the companies they work for to treat them like that. Well, Alex Marshall, you're doing incredibly important work and, and you speaking very eloquently about the issues you're dealing with. Thanks so much for joining us. That's my pleasure.